Okay, um, let's get right into me, guys. Uh, and uh, what we're going to be doing today, tonight, if you're getting us, Jacob, my friend, and uh, finance, please. Give me a great, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, as we always have done in the past, we go over what we covered last week. If you guys remember, we did con box fill calculation, J box fill calculation, device box calculation, and pull boxes. And pull boxes. So um, I'm going to ask you, I always go over the, the quiz, guys, and review the quiz. But review the quiz. Anybody, on, anybody wants to, to emphasize a certain question in particular? Anybody wants to go over a certain question? Chad, how about an X for no chat? Uh, if you want to go over one particular one in 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 uh, in particular, uh, give me a check or a chat with me. I will go over the answer, as we have passed, so no problem. Oh, um, we're gonna do with boxes and fill guys. Uh, review the quiz, and then after that, we're gonna go for our topic for the night, a very interesting topic, and um, so hopefully we can cover all the stuff about it. Uh, article 110, Emma will not, not get engaged in the electrical industry, my friends, if you don't know Article 110. Article 110, unreal. Um, safety, um, um, requirement, work clearances, dedicated space for high voltage, low voltage, um, approval of equipment, all this good stuff will be... Um, all these stuff in Article 110. So the name of the game, Ross, tonight is it's Article 110, basically. So that's kind of the name of the game. Uh, number one through A and B would work. Okay, I'll let me look at one number one A and B in a second here. Okay, so let's get guys and, and, and go with the review of the quiz. Okay, which of the following statement is false? So emphasize the word false. Uh, false statement, our answer here is non metallic the boxes must be used only with non-metallic cables. Only. Is that true? You can use them with metallic cables under certain restrictions. Only with non-metallic cables and radiators. So that, I can't emphasize where it's false. Metallic can be used with non-metallic boxes if the metallic or or connectors are bonded together inside the box by the use of the bonded bushings. Yes, that's okay. Uh, Raceways can can be used with non-metallic boxes if the metal raceways or connectors are bonded together inside the box by use of a bonding jumper. No problem with this. This is either okay. Well, as the false, maybe that's uh, um, Brent. Maybe that's what got you up. The false, and I know we always can always think hard, but get used to your German exam. That's how they test you. So for this one is the wrong, wrong, wrong one is number one. Listed on metal boxes that contain threaded interest can be used with metal with metal raceways and cables if the boxes contain an integral bonding means that bonds all threaded interests together. That's okay, no problem. So that's basically I, I think that the confusion was probably the false is false. Okay, that's for number one. Number two, conduit bodies such as cabs, elbows, and service entrance elbows for conductors number six or smaller are not permitted to contain an answer for that all of the above. You can't put license cab devices unless they are listed for that. Unless they're listed for that. So that's uh, for number two. And stop me guys at any time. If you chat with me, I'm watching my chat here to see if I'm uh, too slow. Boxes installed in wet location. If you install a box in wet location, what do you need to do? You need to arrange to prevent moisture entering, arrange for drainage, moisture entering, drainage, wet location rated or lifted. So all these are okay. So number D is the law is, is the right answer. With their volume and cubic inches may be included in the volume of the box. Number four, all of the above, uh plaster rings, if you have one, device plates, uh tinge rings, all these the cubic inches um, so for the sake of the calculation so the answer is four okay. uh, which one or more in internal um, internal labs are installed volume always is number five as if we have an internal clamp 
all your internal clamps, Jacob will count as one conductor based on the largest big fat conductor that enters the box. Where more fixture studs or fixture hickeys are installed, the volume allowed per type is number six, and our answer is one. So hickeys and studs each will count as one conductor. Each will count as one conductor. Hickeys, in this case, for hickeys or studs, each count as one conductor. So this is number one, number seven. Number seven, my friends, is the conductor allowance must be made for each device, strap, or yoke. We remember, guys, we said number seven is double. So you double the amount of double conductor allowances is allowed for any device based on the conductor Eric landing on that device. So it's number twelve, number twelve, number ten, number ten, number fourteen, number fourteen. Okay. There's a few calculation here, so here, let me just go and do this one right away. Giving us, I want to highlight, it's a 4 by 4 let me change my color into red so you guys can see it. Uh, it's the most important, it's 4 by 4 there is a um, master ring, which is 3.5, so when you add the ring and the box, it gives you a total cubic inches of 24.6, okay, great. That put together, the ring and the box. We have one grounding conductor number 12, bare, and I have three conductors number 12, and I also have a one duplex receptacle. That's all what I have. And they're asking me, they say, how many number of conductors can I pull through? So they said, one. Well, here's the start. I start with number 12 conductor. For number 12 conductor, guys, you're going to have, how many of them do I have? I have three. Number um, ground. For ground conductor, all your ground conductor all counts as one. So I have one allowance for the ground. Then I have a receptacle, didn't I? No, receptacle. I have my receptacle. My receptacle will count, as, I have one of them, and it will count as two, because it has double allowances. We multiply it by two. Did we miss anything? Internal clamps, it says both clamps internal. So I care about the internal clamps. I think we missed, we added everything. And then if you guys multiply all this, multiply it by the allowance for uh, number 12, which is, uh, um, what is it, 2.25? I think it's 2.25, correct me wrong, 2.25. The allowance is for number 12. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. So you guys go to um, right here. So, yep, number 12 is 2.25 chance. Okay, so you multiply the thing here by 2.25, my friend. 2.25, 2.25, no problem. And if you add it, and if I have my calculator handy here, and I do the math right away, 3 times 2.2, um, okay, 3 times 2.25 uh, plus 2.25 uh, plus 2 times 2.5 equal. 13, if I did my math right, right? 13.5, if you correct me, did my math wrong here. So this is the already occupied space. Now we know the volume, we know that we have 24.6, 24.6, the available room. I already occupied 13.5 out of that. So minus uh, 24.6, if I that right, I have, I will get 11.1, okay? 11 to 1. That's how much I can fill out of this uh, box after I can I account for all the receptacles and and, um, and the devices inside this box. Okay, then they're asking number 10. How many number 10 guys? So here's step number one is right here. Step two is right here. Step number three, guys, is you take the available room space and it by the allowance for number 12. And then, which is 2.5, allow one for 2.5. So you take this one divided by 2.5 equal. Answer is going to be 4.44. 4. And I know about you, uh, Brenna, my friend. Either you custom design yourself a 0. 0.44 uh, receptive uh, conductor, or your conductors are going to be number four. And for it, our answer was number four, right in here. Any that, that's a good exercise to do it. Any question? Any questions? Any questions? Let me ask you. So no questions here. Let me ask you guys before you exit. 
Can you see the bottom of my screen? Can you see everything that I did on the screen? Can you see the bottom where it wrote the four? Everybody can see the whole screen? No? Do I see the screen, Eric? No? Do you see the screen? So, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so that's you guys can see. Um, you said, okay, can you see out up to here? Can you see where I draw the line, guys? Can you see I draw the line? How about it? And uh, uh for Chad. So let's do all right. Let's go to fifty. Okay, let's go to fifty. Um, I see Jesse. Can you go to the resolution of fifty? Can you get now? Can you see that? Can you resolution fifty? You probably see the whole thing, yes. Green check, you guys see that? I will change it. Green check, please. Resolution. You can change the resolution to 20 will be great. Huh? You can see that perfect. <laughs> resolution 50. All right. Awesome. That's basically what this um, 76. Um, um, fit and work. Fit and with viewer. Okay. Fit and with viewer. Okay. That's basically it, my, my friends. Um, for number eight. Um, I mean nine. Number nine is non-metallic sheet cables must extend inside, and our answer for that is the quarter inside the box. Um, okay. Moving on to number ten. Number five, friends, is unused opening in boxes must be closed with. Number ten is C. A fitting provided, uh, providing protection equivalent. The key point is equivalent to the wall of the enclosure. You, you can't just put um, things that are not equivalent to the wall of the enclosure. Just cuff some, uh, cuff some on yourself a, um, a sheet metal, metal. So that's number 10. Number 11. Number 11, the maximum width of a gap uh, between a drywall and the devices, as we all know, 188. If you material in inches, otherwise you have to fill it. So to be filled, if it's number eight or less, if it's more than number eight, then you have to fill it. Okay, well, the box which does not contain a device or a fixture to third to support is two race with R threaded wrench ties or two different sides um, on two devices and the two race with are support within. And our answer for that one, number 12, is three feet, as we all know. Number 13, my friends, is uh, boxes and fitting for uh, lighting fixtures must be designed to support a fixture up to 50, or fixtures up to 50. And that, consult your, your uh, engineer. Um, number 14, number 14, listed ceiling fans weigh not more than. And number 14, our answer for that, number 70. If it's listed, after 35, I think some of you got confused between 35. If a listed fan box should handle 35, after 35, it should be listed with the weight to 70, so I can list it as listed for 55 pounds, listed for 70 pounds. After 50, uh, 70, you design your own structural support. And, man, my friend Ross, I need you guys to be with me, one of you, Ross. Uh, question, Dan, no. In. One of them moving a little bit fast because of the timing goes. non metal sheet cable. This is interesting because this is, I guarantee you, probably will be in German exam, guys, right in this one. If you have the clamps must be secured within inches of the box. If you bring uh, an anam cable that enters a single gang non metallic box without a cable clamp, so no cable clamp, you support it at 12, right? But if it's no, it has no clamp, then you have to support at eight. Very interesting. Remember this one from Chad, guys. Um, that would be only if you don't have a clamp and some cable coming to a box like this and no clamp, and you brought it right in here, then you have to support uh, eight inches. Otherwise, if you have a clamp, uh, you can go all the way up to as we all know, twelve. So number fifteen, sixteen, and a pole of number four or larger conductors, the minimum distance between each raceway entering 
opposite. Remember, it's a U pole. And the opposite wall is, you guys remember, six. Six times plus all the other conduits in uh, six. And uh, not uh, be less than six times the trace size or largest trace width plus all the other conduits. Number 13, ceiling suppliers that secure the suspended ceiling system to the building are not permitted to do. Number 17, support the boxes. Uh, support boxes. Support more than one box or fixture. Support more than two boxes or fixtures. Support more than uh, four boxes or fixtures. You cannot support boxes out of these um, ceiling. Wires. Number 15, uh, thick boxes, our answer for this one was B, are generally generally required to be grounded. Must have a metal cover, no. And a half metal must be used with the metallic sheet cable, no. All the above, no. So generally, it requires bonding and grounding. Okay, 15, boxes in a wooden wall of a ceiling must be flush. You guys remember? Spread the flush. 20 and the last one, box. Is on opposite sides of a required fire resistive wall must not be in the same stud or space or have to separate them by 24 inches. By 24 inches. Oh, any question, guys, about the quiz before we get into our lesson for the night? Any question? How about an expert chat? My friend, drops one of you guys. You clone tonight, we're going to call you. Let's go. Uh, one said, speed up, move it, Chad. Let's go to, so this is the quiz, guys, and this appears. Um, so, move guys from boxes, uh, device boxes, J boxes, whole boxes, uh, into electrical installation. Uh, article one thing is very interesting, so I have a few things guys to cover tonight. Uh, so, so uh, in R110, guys, we're going to cover uh, dedicated space and working space on the electrical equipment. We're going to cover some approval of equipment, listing, labeling, uh, voltages, and a couple of other requirements that's really interesting to go through. We're going to go to the manholes and um, and touch on to tongues uh, where, where the tongues they have high voltage systems. We have a, we have a big plan for the night, guys. The first guidelines for approval of equipment. Uh, you cannot, will not install any pieces of equipment unless it's approved by authority having jurisdiction. Now, authority having jurisdiction, guys, is like anyone of you, if you become an inspector, your own tool is that you are listing. If the equipment is not listed and labeled, then, then basically you are not going to approve it. The end of in inadequate equipment fault withstand and interrupting rating. This is interesting. Um, if your equipment not Sized properly to handle the available short surface energy, arc, and magnetic field, uh, then this equipment will uh, basically will kick you, will uh, blow your face, and will make a big, big fuss for you in terms if you have a three phase bolted uh, short circuit. And that's, um, and you get a lot of arc flash, and you probably have uh, understand that. Uh, Conductors working space and identification of disconnect means and circuits. We're going to touch on that one. So these things, guys, that that we will be touching on as we go. I will be sharing my desktop with you as we get uh, through. So I want to advise you guys. You can't basically in the article. You can't move article one ten. You read it's the, it's, the, it's it's on the bridge, the bottom of the electrical installation. Our general requirements for electrical installation. What, that's exactly what you guys do. General requirements for electrical installation. That's a school. A school. Conductor and equipment, as we all know, must be approved. Or why should we use them? You cannot use any conductor that's not approved or any equipment that's not. You should not. It will not be uh, um, approved by authority having jurisdiction. And approval, of course. Um, Come after the label that has been listed or labeled. Listed um, and labeled. Any equipment? Any question? Yes, equipment. Question. Any my friend? So the equipment has to be approved. Examination, identification, installation, and use of equipment. So, just my friend, 
in order for the equipment to be approved, it has to be examined and identified. There's a few things that we take into consideration as we examine equipment and not a few and mostly. A relation use must confirm to the NEC code book. Uh, rules, uh, uh, when you need a uh, physical protection, you have to use rigid, PVC schedule 80. Medical strength and durability of the system uh, to handle the physical mechanical stress on that particular conduit or equipment. Uh, as you bend um, winding and connection spaces, guys, say uh, uh, bend base. Just the bending space table. Um, three ten dot twelve, if I remember that. Um, so table ten dot twelve. Yes, three ten dot twelve dot uh, three. Uh, three twelve dot six a. Three twelve dot six a and b guys give you a minimum bending space that you can install the equipment according. So if you have a, a big switch gear here and you're coming from the bottom, you need the minimum bending space right here for your equipment. Otherwise, you're going to damage the installation. Electrical insulation, um, what type of insulation to use and where electrical insulation has to be examined. Uh, you say it's a THHN, you know, somebody has to be approved. THHN is rated 40 degrees. Uh, well, somebody has to be tested to be rated. Here is a normal and abnormal condition. What happened to these conductors and equipment uh, for heat generated by overloading the equipment? You have 4,000 amp switch gear, you're pulling 5,000 amp switch gear, All right, that's overloading. Or circuit, you have a 4,000 amp switch gear and you shorted it and now you're pulling 65,000 amps for a short amount of time. What can this equipment handle? Arcing effect, and that's a big deal, guys. Um, is it going to be able to handle the arc line to line, line to ground, and so forth? Classification by type, size, voltage, all have to be examined and um, tested by the UL. Size, voltage, current, capacity, and specific uses. At location, and has a location, what's the amp, what's the voltage, uh, and so forth. This is in, uh, installation and use, guys. Installation and use, here's your basic than yours. Mid equipment shall be installed and used in accordance with, with instruction. Uh, first equipment has to be listed, Jacob, my friend, and GSC has to be used based on the uh, uh, link and labeling. For example, if I have a wet location rated fixture, can I use it in a class 1 div 1? No, because the class 1 div 1, you need an explosion proof fixture. Um, so you use uh, a wet rated fixture, even though it's listed and labeled for wet location, but it's not listed and labeled for a hazardous location class 1 div 1. So see that all these equipment guys, before you start installing and they have to be listed, labeled, and approved by the authority having jurisdiction. Any any comments? Says, and my friend. Any questions? No. When we talk about the equipment voltage, it's a big deal, guys. The voltage shall be that at which the circuit operates. I have um, a. So we need the voltage of the equipment is 480. This means it, that's the voltage, the minimal, perfect world voltage that this equipment would run uh, at. Voltage rate shall not be less. This is really interesting. Look at this one very clearly. Shall be less than the nominal voltage of the circuit. Shall not be less than the nominal voltage of the circuit. Uh, the equipment shall not be less than the nominal the voltage rating shall of the equipment shall not be less than the nominal voltage of the circuit. Look at your heater. Your heater is rated. Oops, this is not on color here. Leave it on. Let's go change it to a green. Um, here's your equipment, guys. Two four heater. Can I go and pump that boy at, uh, at four volts? No. You're going to be well. If it's a heater, it will work. Will give you more heat, but it will eventually fail on you. If it's a motor, you burn it. Uh, if it's a capacitor, you burn it. So you're not supposed to put a 240 volt into a 480 system, right? That's the basic big connection. Let's talk about that particular one, guys. Um, board heaters. That, 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 that thing happened to me. I installed a couple of baseboard heaters a couple of years ago in a motel. And running at 240, right? So you put them all around and you arrange them in the room. 
and on the and best of them, I was able to to put two of them on one circuit. So Grim here and buddies on one twenty amp circuit. There's a net load that we installed. And here's another two was put in another twenty amp circuit. Okay? Well there's one little thing here and I was installing these. These are the two forty. So I didn't start of them that day. So one little thing I forgot to uh, to do is connected one of them. One uh here, let's just say one was here and that was rated for two forty. And I actually brought one twenty to it. One twenty happened to me. When I brought it all to a J box guys, it was remodeling, so I had a J big J box, brought the wires and from the J box we went to a fully installed panel. Long shot one of them was was supposed to be two forty, but I went at one twenty and guess what? The power coming out of this two forty was one fourth the amount of power or heat that could have been had this heater um being at two forty. So long short the owner called me and said, Chad, it's working but it's not glowing and giving me as much heat as the other. And I immediately immediately knew that I screwed the job. And put that two forty on a one twenty circuit. And it looked like as easy as this guy. It was box full of wires, and it's so easy to look at the hot and say, oh, yeah, that must be a circuit coming from 120. So you put a 120 on it. So, so you need to fix the heater. So long story short, the equipment has to be rated for the voltage that they work at. I have another thing that is to your attention here. So if I have a motor right here, um, and when you go to motors, the usual rated is slightly this. So you're going to see that a motor is rated for 460. 460, okay. So what they do with certain equipment that we, they list them for voltage slightly less than the nominal voltage. So if you look at the difference between these two voltages, you're looking at a volt, not a whole lot. And there isn't Brenner for this because of voltage drop. So we go install this at the 50 feet from now, from here, and another. 20 feet over here, and I need to do voltage drop. Uh, by the time the voltage, I, I start with 80, by the time I reach the motor, if the voltage is 460, the motor will work efficiently. Will work efficiently. And that's the they rate certain equipment, guys. Slightly, if you see the equipment says 460, that rate is for 480. The voltage, less voltage is just to accommodate for voltage drop installation in the field. Any I don't want you to get confused between it. Any questions? Any questions? Here you guys you'll find equipment rated for two thirty and running at running at two forty. So what happens to that ten amp chair, ten volt chair? These are your voltage drop uh, that you can drop and the equipment still function uh, as uh, specified. Okay, so that voltage conductor shall be covered unless we are, in a, so this is really interesting, and then click to your gentleman exam, guys. If they, if you, if I ask you to size um, a load, you always go to the cover unless I ask you to go aluminum or cover clad aluminum. So that's right in the code. If you don't know that, this is right from the code. It's aluminum cover unless you're told otherwise. The conductor size we, we use in the U.S. Uh, and we're all of us here in the U.S. So we were not in Europe where we're out. The conductor we use in the U.S. is called the American Wire Gauge, guys. And I don't know how many of you, how many of you guys have seen number 44? Anybody have number 44 conductor? 40. 40 conductor? Anybody have seen number 40 conductor? That's what they require that they use in the, inside the motor. Number 40. So just to put this in perspective for some of you guys, uh, number 22, number 22, that's the phone wire there. That I used to give you an idea, that's number 22. So, so if the 22 is the phone, what the heck is 40, Chad? That's a tiny, tiny, it's like almost a hair. For, uh, for certain application, obviously, I've never seen anything used in in low voltage less than 22 probably has an application. So for all practical reasons guys, your all your application is going to be from 22 all the way to 4 uh, to 4 hours. So that's the 
that, as we all know, we go to the uh, KCM, KCM, and circular mill. We switch into the KCM, which is the table circular mill, the circular mill which we are coming to calculating and doing all this stuff. So, American gauge. Um, if you are working, Matthew, in Europe, they use um, square millimeter square. Um, the crushing area of the conductor, so it's a 1.5, I don't know if it's 1.5 uh, uh, squared millimeter. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen that, but if you work in other parts of the world, they use 1.5. 1.5 is equivalent actually to number 14, gauge 14. Um, from gauge and 2.5 square millimeter. Equivalent to a 12. I don't know if that's the value or anything, but just the most common wires that they use there. And for 14 and 12. Okay. And there are tables, guys, that convert between the two systems. All right, let's see. The other thing that we need to do, guys, and I'm going right to the integrity. Heat insertion shall be free from short, uh, short circuit or ground poles or any connection to ground other than what's needed. Did by the arc of that by the grounding. We just will emphasize uh, and make it very clear for the inspector to if Chad decided to use a bare conductor inside a conduit here that you can't do that, Chad, because of the ground poles and the short circuit. So very integrity of the wire. Um, sure, it's it's the short circuit and no ground poles allowed in the wire. Third method. Creative rust and my friend in America and elsewhere, and people will can come up with a barbed wire like this, and you can use that barbed wire here. You put your light over here, right? And and from the other side, let's go use a um, uh, uh, let's just creative and use here um, a steel bar, a steel wire, right? And bring the one twenty from this side. Okay, so decide to use one barbed wire from one the, for the hot coming back with the steel ray bar. Is this proved by any sequence book? No. Why? Why can't I use the barbed wire and ray bar, steel ray bar, to uh, 120 circuit? Because this article, plan methods considered suitable are included in any sequence book. Or invention, my friends, you have to go to you and list it and label it and then get it. Get put in an EC code, then we can use it. Recognize that the link shall be permitted to be installed in the type of building. Only the recognized part wiring shall be permitted. Other barbed wire and ray bar, steel bar, no, they're not, not recognized. Any questions, my friend, Matthew, Joel, any questions? So, the Jacob tells you, why can't I use a barbed wire? Always refer them to Article 110.0. Eight. The only way methods included in any secret book is allowed. In racing, guys, um, <clears throat> and withstand raining, there's, there's two short circuits basically. Um, this scenario interrupting racing uh, is the ability of the circuit breaker to handle certain amount of energy and magnetic force. Coming out of a short circuit or a ground fault. The ground fault, what's a ground fault? Grab your phase A and bump it to the ground. That's a ground fault. Phase B or phase C. What is a circuit? Grab your phase A and phase B and go bolt them together. Um, or phase A, phase B, and phase C all together. Three phases and, and bolt them together. That's your three phase. What happens, um, Byron, my friend, if you bond um, the, the phase three together. You basically excluded the load. When you exclude those guys, I always, the circuit, here's how I, I, I describe a short circuit. Imagine you're driving your vehicle right in here. Yeah? Just my description. Here's your vehicle driving it right in here. All of a sudden, driving, driving, and all of a sudden there's bam, there's a big, big, big cliff right in here. So, so you keep driving, you're driving your vehicle here, 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 up, up, up until you reach a short circuit and bam, you drop down. You drop down, 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 down. Your voltage went down, your current went, went up, and you burned yourself inside this vehicle. That's exactly what a short 
circuses. We're moving on our way at 75 miles an hour, and all of a sudden there's a big cleft of 20 foot deep in, into, into the ground. Think about it. And the vehicle is going to fly right through it and down, plunge 20, say 200 feet um, <laughs> down. That's basically what a short circuit is. So, well, Jacob, my friend, your beautiful motor or pump here, that's my 15 horsepower motor. I'm running it, everything is beautifully run. And all of a sudden, so that's my vehicle running at 75 miles an hour. And all of a sudden, a big cliff on the road. So I can fly and drop, right? The same thing, a big cliff on the road is phase A and phase B and phase C shorted together. Because of heat, ventilation melted, and I got myself uh, the maximum short circuit. Short circuit is uh, interrupting racing guys is the ability of a short circuit to interrupt the uh, uh, ability of a circuit breaker or a fuse to interrupt the short circuit. So, Jim, my friend, the only reason why we have short circuits one reason, well, one main reason. If I have a short circuit, if I don't have an overcompetition device, if you don't have an overcompetition device, guys, you know what happens? It, you keep and more and more energy you keep cooking inside your equipment and all of a sudden you start smoking uh, equipment starts making smoking conductor starts smoking and um, after that of course it smokes if you don't know what condition device it's going to catch fire and, and in the event actually if the, the circuit breaker head of the transformer feed your building is going to shut down but by that time your building will be completely engulfed in fire why we have an interrupting rating. So every speaker guys has an interrupting rating. Here's the situation here. If I have a short circuit of 15,000 15, here and my baby, my overcompetition device can only handle 10, do you think a 10,000 um, interrupting rating will be able to handle a 15,000 short circuit? What do you think? How about an X for no, Chad? It can't. A green check for yes. Do you have a circuit breaker with a power of 10? K. Can K power circuit break handle a 15 short circuit problem? No. Can't handle a 15 short circuit problem. So, um, there are the guys, I'm going to use the symbol of more, more equal. Short, the overcompetition device, the interrupting rating of the fuse or the circuit breaker must be more or equal to the level short circuit. Ashing is about this one. You're gonna you're gonna hear a lot as you as you move through guys about interrupting rating. So the, the, the only thing you need to know is equipment intended to interrupt current at other than um, the fault will have an interrupting rating at nominal circuit voltage sufficient for the current that must be interrupted. It's too much detail and too much engineering part guys. A breaker. Here's my circuit breaker, and this is a hundred amp circuit breaker, right? 100 amp full load. The interrupting rating of this circuit breaker is 22k, right? Every circuit will have two, two readings. One reading is the full load amp, that's the 100, and the second one is the interrupting rating, and that's the short circuit rating. So when you, uh, Brenda, my friend, when you install the circuit breaker, you're going to ask yourself first, do I have 100 amp load or less? Yes, check. Then that will work. The second thing you need to ask yourself is, is a short circuit, if there's a short circuit right here, would a circuit right here would be, say the short circuit was 21.3K. What 22K big boy can handle a 22K amp um, circuit breaker handle a problem of a short circuit 21.3? Yes. Yeah. So we're good on both sides. So. Any question about the interrupting rating of the equipment? Interrupting rating of the equipment. Interesting concept. Very interesting concept. That's what we call it, the interrupting rating of the equipment. Second thing is, the interrupting rating is circuit impedance and other characteristics. Um, well, there's a lot of engineering part of that. It's the characteristics of the circuit must be coordinated to permit the circuit protective device to clear the fault without extensive damage to the electrical equipment. That being an engineer, I go overboard with that one. Um, here's here's the, what they do guys with the circuit. 
This is old fiction advice. They call them current characteristic curves and use them on the equipment all the time. Um, and my overcome fiction device for the equipment, my overcome fiction device for the equipment. So and 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 behind it, behind it we have a curve that called damage curve. This curve is called damage curve for the conductor. And have an equipment a switch gear also have a damage curve for the switch gear. And think of that. Think this guys. If I have a short circuit right in here, right in here, right in here. Right in here, anywhere um, from down. Okay, my and that short circuit will keep going, going, going on. Bam! The minute it hits the circuit breaker, it will hold the circuit before it's the green and the yellow. The same, look at that, it keeps going, going on. Bam! It hits the circuit breaker, the circuit breaker will trip. Here is so high, it will enter the circuit breaker immediately and trip. Trip. It's up to this point. And if you have short circuit right in this point, right here, you do you because your circuit breaker cannot handle it. So then you keep going all the way, it's going to hit what your equipment, and it's, this equipment is now it's doomed. This switch gear is burning. So that's what creating the impedance, guys, and the characteristics uh, without the details. I don't know if that's too much detail. So we we do we do coordination wearing my engineering hat. We do a lot of coordination guys that make sure that the uh, the bell short circuit is less than um, the interrupting rating of the circuit breaker. Otherwise, we have to change the circuit breaker interrupting rating. See, anybody has any question about that? <laughs> Anything else? I don't I don't expect you to get into all these current characteristic curves and so forth. If time errors, my friend, Bumman has really great, uh, they call them um, current, um, time current characteristic curves. It's a big deal. That's where your equipment starts smoking. Into more tangible things that are our deteriorating agents. As you guys all know, you should not put anything in area where it's going to deteriorate. So unless identified for the use, conductors or equipment shall be located. So look at the places. You shall not put them in damp or wet locations unless it's listed for that. So how you, like THW. If I have a THW, how do I know I can put a THW in a wet location? Chad, because W. How do I know it's because of the W Matthew? Because three ten dot thirty three ten dot thirteen I believe table three ten dot thirteen will tell you that W stands for wet and if it's good for wet it's good for damp. Where it's to gas, fumes or other agents that can deteriorate uh, have a deteriorating effect. So you don't wanna you wanna put a conduit or a conductor guys and leave it for twenty five to fifty years and find it there. That's basically what 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 the body you're putting. We're exposed to excess temperature. You don't want to put it because that will deteriorate the conductors and the insulation and so forth. Shall be protected against damage during the construction. Also, we make sure that due construction, because things are exposed, you have to protect it against damage from, you know, from the agent, from uh, the ants and so forth. Any questions about protecting conductors and equipment? You have a friend ask. Switch gear, a 4000 amp switch gear. They look at the switch gear at the job site. And you can't just leave the switch gear if it's an indoor switch gear. You just leave it outside sitting exposed to the element in Minnesota for four months until you guys wrap it in and go put your switch gear. You're supposed to protect it as it's during construction. So if it's indoor use switch gear, you're supposed to basically put it indoor, protect it from the element. Due instruction and of course after construction that goes without discussion. So insulation. Uh, this is an interesting uh, workmanlike execution, a mechanical execution of work installed in a neat and workmanlike manner. Uh, why do you think the inspector will care if you have conduits right in here and a box right in here, another box right in here, and a third box right in here? Why do you think uh, the inspector will, if you go and you install them this way, how about this way? 
and how the box this, this way. Why do you install these conduits this way between the inspector, between the, the boxes, guys? I can and be creative too. How about if I orient my box this way? And then I have another conduit here and move right with the right angle. Why do you think this is wrong? Great, if you ask my wife, that's why I installed in a neat and workmanlike manner. That's where the inspector guys will catch you. Workman or work person like manner for politically correct term. So that's that's basically how your installation has to be at right angles, look nice. Um, so that's yeah, the actual a lot of stuff. Um, unused opening, any unused opening with electrical equipment guys must be closed because of spread the wire because of um and and, and and fading into it and because of a couple of other things. Integrity, direct equipment, and connection must be maintained for the workmen. Uh, maintain the integrity of the, the equipment, internal bars of direct equipment, including bus bars, wire terminals, insulation, blah, 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 shall not be damaged or contaminated by foreign materials such as paint, plastic, and so forth. To maintain the integrity of the electrical equipment from chemical reaction and so forth. My friends, any question about that? Basically, where they catch you. Yeah. Integrity. The execution of work. Mounting and cooling equipment. Mounting and cooling equipment. Uh, if you uh, if you have a like a uh, a good a good example Eric of this would be a, a big fat a transformer, a FR transformer. Uh, the transformer, as we know, guys, it needs um, it needs air to cool the transformer. It's air cool. Mounting must be firmly secured uh, more than um, plugs. And so first of all, you have to support it to support the equipment if it's on the ceiling or something. They do not want you to use wooden plugs. I uh, used them a couple of times. I ran out of other things, but you're supposed to use wooden plugs uh, to mount. And the second thing is to mount them firmly. The, firmly. the last thing you want to do, last thing that you want to you want to have in your hand is a hanging transformer that's loose. So you have a you have a physical mechanical load of a transformer or a panel. A panel is shaking and and, and uh, dancing right on the wall. That's the last thing you want to do uh, with electrical equipment. Electrical equipment does not like to move or vibrate. Um, the more you move vibrate, guys, the more you you're going to loosen the connection, and the more you're going to arc and spark, and the more you're going to get fire and um, and you know burn equipment. Oh, second thing is very important dear to my heart is cooling, guys. Equipment that requires cooling must be installed so that the flow of air is not prevented by walls or by adjacent installation equipment. Very good example, as I said, guys, is a transformer. I have a transformer that needs to be cooled. I can't go put that transformer. The cooling part of the transformer right against the wall, uh, especially where, where, where you know, depends which side of a transformer, as you guys know. Can't go put walls around all that my transformers uh, and then prevent the air from coming in and out of the transformer and cooling it. So most of the time, guys, transformers you leave them, you know, you leave it around them. You put them right in here. You leave a you leave a room in and at least where the air is going to be coming. If there's in here. If there is nothing, if the uh, heating cooling is, is just coming from the side, then you can you can uh, allow the, the transformer to right against the wall. Here's my wall. Here's my transformer. Air coming from this side, come out from the other side. Natural conduction um, of of air to cool the transformer is good to go. So that's very important for transformers and equipment. Um, Transformers, U classes, anything that has conversion of equipment uh, that converts uh, voltage and current into a different voltage and current, or AC to DC, or DC to AC, and so forth. Questions, my friends, about the cooling? No chance. 314. 14. If you guys have been sleeping so far, I want you to wake up because this is the single most important. Um, are that you're going to be using the 310 The connection, conductor and term and, and terminal material. Um, the conductors and terminal material guys. Um, 
multi conductor terminal. A couple of things about conductors is cup and aluminum conductor in the same lump. We all know that conductors are the cover aluminum or cover glad aluminum, and terminals are the cover aluminum or cover glad aluminum. So if you have a cover conductor, you're going to land it on a cover lug. If you have a aluminum conductor, you have to land it on a lug that's rated for aluminum. And the other thing, we all know that we can put a cover and aluminum conductor in the same lug. There are lugs that's rated for cover aluminum, guys, where you can bring your cover conductor in one side, and aluminum conductor in the other side. They don't touch each other, and you and basically you, you will be your lug. That's cover and aluminum lug. We don't touch each other. Um, if you have aluminum, we all know that, guys, the challenge with aluminum air can we all know it expands at a higher rate. No, who cares, Chad? It's cheap and light, right? The challenge when it expands at a higher rate, guys, every time you take 100 amp out of a feeder, one, uh, say, one number one feeder, you take the 100 amp, all the 100 amp for a couple of hours, and you drop that 100 amp into 25 amps because the load went down, it, it hits and cools. Heats and cools. And then and cooling, guys, make contraction and uh, and uh, friction contraction and then long thought that your conductor you're gonna loosen that connection. You loosen that connection after a lot of expansion and contraction, the connection is gonna loosen. And what if you have a loose connection for a couple of four odd conductors sitting in here, they're gonna arc and spark and fail in them. If not they're short and fail, if you're not lucky enough they're gonna create a fire. So you put ox, uh, oxide inhibitors for aluminum, or you know, part of the expansion and the part of oxidation, of course, you know, you prevent it from deteriorating because of oxidation. Uh, conductors under the log. If you have a log that says one conductor right here, and you're going to go insert one conductor. If you have a log that's rated for two conductors, so you're going to have two slots right on the log. And you can go insert uh, another conductor. So, uh, Joanne, my friend, you can then go and have two conductors under the same log. Here's my log, and grab another conductor on the same log. If you need to do that, what do you do? You bring conductor number one, conductor number two, you tape them, you, you, you set them together. You have to do that, and you bring them under that log. If you Conductors uh, with spl underground splice. If you're splicing, guys, the conductor the splice has to be rated for, for you know, conductors too. And if you're doing splices underground, it has to be rated for what location? In splice, anti HSM conductor rating. These things, guys, the, that's very important in Article 110, uh, version number 14. The conductor shall be spliced or joined with splicing devices identified for the use or by using welding or soldering with a fusible mill or alloy. Uh, solder splices shall first be spliced or joined so as to mechanically and electrically secure with solder and then be soldered. All splices and joints and three ends of conductor shall be covered with an insulating equipment to that of the conductor. After you, you, you you connect them, you're going to uh, cover them. Wire connectors of splice means insulated on conductor for direct bus shall be listed for that. If you're installing direct burial cable, you have to uh, you have to be listed for that. Um, and well, you want the way that if you if it's a one. If the log is rated for one conductor, you are not supposed. I know you can fit multiple, but and I've done it. Believe me. But if the conductor, like the one that the other guys that you have, in the, a good example is you have that little bar for the neutral and the ground, and there's these slots. You know, and these are rated for one conductor, right? And uh, you grab. Uh, is one to put one conductor is one slot. These are rated for one conductor. Need more than one, what do you do? You have another slot. So it's it for one conductor. The same thing. If you need more, you just add one of these uh, copper. That makes sense. But you can't just bring two wires under the same log. You can get this, but it's not. It's not cool. Okay. The any question is.
Any questions, my friend? Any questions? Thing, um, before we make the second thing I guess want to mention, uh, I don't think we are going to flash our flash before we go to that one. So I'm going to talk about the temperature rating in a second, guys. This is very important. If you don't know that one, um, because temperature rating on real. This is the most important one, the temperature rating of conductors, guys, under 310.14. Um, let me, it will second here. Let me, guys, go and walk you. Because that's really going to emphasize that one. Um, let me go and turn my desktop with you. I know it's time to break, but after this one, I brought you. Uh, I will get you a break here. So let's go uh, share my desktop. Uh, let's go directly into um, R10, article 10. And in, in particular, I need 110.14. 14 for action. Okay, that's my friends, and I'm going to grab you guys here and um, uh, let you. I can see. Uh, there you go. We're good. All right, well, let's let's just take guys uh, to equipment temperature rating. It might be one from before we get into the terminal. This is the most important of those guys and I think I highlighted it before but I'm going to go away to right here and then I like a few things I'm going to go green highlighter and um, and start the thing I want you guys to look at is um, temperature this is the temperature rating maybe I can change my color to uh, red temperature rating it says temperature rating associated with the ambition of the conductor shall not shall be selected now, we've got a conductor shall be selected and coordinated so as not to exceed the lowest temperature rating um, of, of any connected terminal, conductor, or device. This is the single most important thing when we rise the end of a conductor. Conductor with temperature rating higher than specified shall be permitted. So, if you have a three temperature rating, guys, you're going to choose the one, you're going to choose the one that actually give you the, the lowest amount of amp. Okay, equipment. Equipment is very interesting. Uh, just remember, I don't know if you remember, I said if, if your equipment, you have a piece of equipment, here's my equipment right here. If my equipment is rated for 100 amp, my equipment is 100 amp or less, um, or less, is my one equipment. The second equipment, guys, it goes more than 100 amp. More than basically then 100 amp the equipment is so it is the first one is 100 amp or less or the conductor is number 14 through number one they have to go to the 60 degree column no question asked very interesting so equipment is 100 amp or less or number 14 unless you know otherwise and the emission temperature shall be based on this this unless the equipment is listed and more I can't emphasize, unless the equipment is listed and more otherwise, the conductor shall follow the following. Unless, the, unless it's listed, this is what you're going to be following. 100 or less, number 14 through number 1, guys. So if the conductor right here is number 14, always through number 1, which you need. More than number 1, see number 1, we go, we'll see where we're not more than number 1. So that's the same thing, conductor with high temperature, you can use higher temperature and you can use it only for what's the provided that this, okay, use, the, the, provided that you're going to use the amp for 60 for it. Conductor higher temperature rating if equipment is listed and identified for the conductor. Then identify. Uh, motors, the exception, guys. If you have motors and C and D, you can use 75, no question, amp. No, yeah. uh, that's basically the still most important thing about how to use the terminal terminals with conductor. So I'm going to change the color here, guys, and go to a different color here. Um, this terminal of equipment rated over 100 amp, or the conductor is over number one, should be based on a 75 connector. 
So that you can use a higher temperature, no problem, as long as you sign the total below 75. And yes, this is basically this one. It will tell you how to size conductors for equipment uh, based on the terminal, based on the temperature rating of the terminal. But my friend, if you don't know anything about the equipment, if you have no idea what the equipment is rated, your cost is 100 or less amps. Or one and number four or number one through fourteen, you go to a sixty degree column. Every sixty degree column is guys, this is from three ten to sixteen. The column is three ten to sixteen. If it is more than a hundred, then you're gonna to go to a hundred amp. If you have motors, you know, uh, if you go with motors, you're gonna to go to seventy five. If you have motors, you always go to seventy five, no question asked. Design A, B, and Sorry, B, C, and D. B, C, and D. I emphasize guys the importance of um, of the article right in here. So please, if you if you have not read this article, make sure this will be on your journeyman exam. No question asked. Right Any guys before you leave, leave this? Any questions? How about an extra chat? Make sure you're with me. Based on that, and I'm going to go back to my desktop. As if I tell you, like I have a, a panel. Um, no, I don't want to no, 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 share that one. There you go. If I said I have here's my panel, and and 25 amp panel. Okay. A 25 amp panel, and I need a feeder for this panel. And all know to size this feeder, you're going to go to 310. That on 75 degree column, 75 degree column. And if you guys go to 310 to 16 under 75 degree column, 75 degree column, it's 125. You're going to put 125. My hand is going to put you. Um, Number one not. Number one. You're gonna be a number one not. Number one not. Oh I'm sorry, number no where number are four not. Two twenty will be four. What am I looking at yes, chair here? Yes. Four not. Two thirty, two twenty three yeah. four not. That's where you're gonna get you a four out. Equipment yes, how to size equipment. How to size equipment. Okay. Okay. Let us go and take a few minutes break here. It's uh, seven five. Let me get you to seven or ten, guys. Uh, let's make it seven eleven. How about that? Seven eleven. Take you a quick break and we'll reconvene.
you check him, please? Everybody agrees. Okay. Uh, second thing I want to mention guys is the um, high leg. You probably have heard the high leg. And uh, how many of you guys know the high leg? How many of you know high leg? Green check. High. Leg. Okay, so it seems a lot of you guys know the high leg. Let me just, since you draw high leg for you, here's my delta. Um, the height of a, um, it's just delta here, as we all know. And here are my three phases coming out of this delta. And let's go on the neutral, grab the neutral here to bring it to the earth and pull our conductor. Okay, so this is going to be my phase A. This is my phase C, then my phase B. Okay, guys, would be the phase B. So, the ground must be permanently marked by an orange finish or effective means. The orange finish and effective means. I don't have an orange here. So, this conductor right in here has to be identified because it has the highest voltage to ground. As you know, this is on a, on a system 243 phase. That's how you get 240. 120, uh, 2123 phase. But this between these two right in here is actually 208. That's kind of my wild leg. Okay? I'm so sure you need to identify an application must be placed at each point on the system where connection is made if the grounded conductor is also present. Get into, I know you can see at the bottom of my screen here, so I'm going to go right in here to this point. So if you can see, um, um, so here's circuit breaker, phase A, phase uh, blank, phase B. If you see phase A, blank, phase B, phase A, blank, phase B, phase A, blank, phase B. If you see a panel like this, this is an indication this is uh, in, uh, um, a delta panel where you tab into phase B, into phase B. This is a common mistake because if I go to phase B and pull a circuit and has my neutral and now this piece of the equipment is running at 120 uh, I mean at 28 who cares 28 the equipment is not rated for 28 so that's really the wild high leg you have to be identified by an orange finish orange finish actually guys about this any question about the high leg mining identification it has another couple of adjectives that the electricians will describe that in the proper tool. If you have electrical equipment like panels, switch, gear switch, cord, and so forth, very interesting what equipment there is. It says equipment such as switch boards, panel boards, industrial control panel, meter sockets, enclosures, and motor control sensors that are in other than willing and like this examination of just servicing or maintenance one of the drives shall be filled with awareness and with awareness qualified persons of potential electric arts national channel. So I can't emphasize the word electrical equipment, switch gear, switch boards and so forth, and other is willing. So willing does not apply to willing uh, and likely to need examination um, in the field by qualified people you have to have an art slash uh, warning. You have to have an R slash warning. And word, when we were guys, we at the beginning, I showed you a study that we did here at Dunwoody. Uh, I did the um, U slash and tell you R slash PP is required. All we have to do right now is just say PP is required. But the R slash that we put, it goes beyond that, guys, by OSHA and it tells you the exact PP rating, category 40 or category 20 or CAT, whatever CAT that you're, you're, uh, you need for this part. What happens? Very interesting. Nothing and for basically uh, electrical equipment that need adjustment while energy and services. Any question about our slash? That's basically major thing for all of us. Our slash. Our slash. Any question about the our slash? Parts, parts of electric equipment that is only in operation to produce arcs, barks, flames. Open metal uh, may be closed or separated and isolated from all combustible material. A good example of this is the fuses. Fuses 
these circuit breakers, magnetic starters, these when they open and close, they could arc and spark. Uh, switches can arc and spark, so you have to isolate them from anything combustible material. Why? Because you might arc in a gas station and you ignite the surrounding. So this after, uh, and the last thing is in this is uh, light and power from a railway conductor. Railway conductor. So for, for light and power shall not be connected to any system that contains strongly wires with ground return. Trolls with the ground return. Very special. So lighting circuit and a power, you're not going to take the return of a trolley wire there. And, and you ground is your return for um, you know, for neutral. Basically. That's basically for that one. Any questions? Any questions? questions? And my friends, before we get into the uh, into identification of disconnect, guys, is marking. Manufacturers, you have to have the trade name or marking should be placed on the electrical equipment. Uh, um, a GE switch gear, I have a switch gear. Marking also, like the voltage, the current, the wattage, uh, the uh, or shall be, shall be provided by a sufficiently durable label. So when you open a switch gear, guys, you have to have some type of an idea right on the switch gear. What's the voltage, the current, the uh, interrupting rating of the switch gear, the manufacturer of the switch gear, the circuit breaker. So if you look at a switch gear panel that you open, you will have some label that actually identify a few things, including the current, the phase, the three phase, single phase, what's the amps, what's the voltage, what's the interrupting rate of the panel, right into that panel. It'll be uh, almost impossible to, to work. Okay, question of disconnect means. Jump to the disconnect means, guys. Uh, it shall be legibly marked to indicate its purpose. And disconnect means you have to have a label to identify what is disconnect mean is doing. Is, is it disconnect an air unit, rooftop unit, or what? Uh, be suitably. Uh, sufficiently durable. You can't write it with a pencil and expect it, guys, to last for 50 years. If you have, this is interesting. If you engineered series combination, how many of you know what an engineered series combination is, or handled engineered series combination? A series combination. And Alan, okay. Well, again, equipment enclosure shall be readily visible. Caution series combination system. You have this combination. You have to have this label. Caution series combination system rated. This amp identify the replacement components required. The same system series combination where circuit breakers or fuses are uh, applied in combination with series, blah, 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 shall be legibly marked. No short without getting into too much technical guys. I'm sure you've seen that all the time in the panels. I don't know if you pay attention to the panels. Uh, if you have a panel like this, uh, what guys is they have a 20, um, and here's the panel, all circuit breakers. Uh, these are the panels going all the circuit breakers all the way down. And if you, let me change color here. And this is, and let me change it into, this is 100 amp panel, 100 amp panel. The erupting rating for this device is 22K, 22,000 amp. So if there's a circuit, this 20,000 amp will handle it. This boy here is a 20 amp circuit breaker, but the erupting rating of this guy is 10 kilo amp, 10 kilo amp. This guy is a 50, this thing is a 40 amp circuit breaker, and the erupting is 10K. And this was a 15 amp circuit breaker, and the thing is also say also same can. And this is say this is a 30 amp circuit breaker, the most common ones. Yeah. And the amping rating is also 10. Yeah. This is common guys with receptacle panels and lighting panels and small equipment panels. Look at the short look at the rating guys of the main as twenty two and amp and the rating of everything else is ten thousand amps. That means, without getting into too much technical here, what means, guys, if I have a short, short circuit right in here, right 
the 30 m the circuit's right at the 30 m level, and the circuit's right here was 15 k, was 15 kilo amps. So what you do guys is they test these together, so that see that big boy, and then the circuit breaker will be working together to clear the voltage. It, so uh, Jacob my friend, that's what they call a series situation. So at that 100 amps, when it sees 15 kilo amps, it basically it it the milli amps will freeze, Brand will freeze, literally freeze, will not move until the big boy that 100 amps, uh, 225 kilo amps interrupt that 15k. So any of that 30 amp is not rated for 15k, it's only rated for 10. So anything higher than 10, that that 10 kilo amp circuit breaker will stop freeze until the main circuit breaker in the panel trips to clear that very high amp short circuit. It's called series rated. That's what they call it, series rated. In your series rated, they can hire somebody like your friend Chad Curdy, and I will engineer a circuit breaker here that's rated for 100 amps, as I would say, and I'm going to make it 35k, and make it a series rated between this baby here, Another 50 amp that is for a 22k. Okay. What does I mean? Engineer them guys, meaning I will get the product from the manufacturer, make sure that they work together, they're tested, labeled, and all the stuff, so I can put my engineering stamp on it. That's what engineering is. It made um, the other one, guys, factory, in the tested series, combination series, they can test them in the factory. Either this the factory that they work together or they can hire an engineer to in the field uh, as it is rated. So who's Eric? I don't know how many of you guys know about series rated. Let me just take you to this panel um, that we just, uh, okay, where's my panel? No, I don't want that one. Uh, if I take you to the panel that we've just done here, the way, uh, uh, let me see, where's my panel? Here. This panel, guys, it must cost you this say two hundred dollars, two hundred if it's rated. If it's not rated, it might pump it all the way up to five hundred dollars. So it makes the equipment cheaper. It makes the equipment cheaper. Any guys what series rated? Any question about series rated without getting into too much technical stuff? But here then almost almost all the lighting panels and the small receptacle panels and small equipment panels are series rated. So if you have know, up to 225 amp panel, most likely it's a series rated panel. That is the rating between the main and the panel and the feeders and the branch circuits inside the panel. So what your series rated is, my friend. Um, um, oh. And before we get into that one, current transformers, unused current transformers associated with potential energy circuits shall be shorted. Um, how many of you guys have seen CTs, they call them CTs? How many of you have installed or, or seen CTs? CTs, donuts that go around the electrical equipment. Here's my phase A, here's my phase B, here's my phase C. If I want to measure the phases, here's my donut one. Is going at two. Here's my going at three. I want to finish. One of these currents is carrying 4,000 amps. 4,000 amps. And if you can imagine, 4,000 amps each one of these. 4,000 amps and 4,000 amps. Okay. Now I don't know about you, Brandon, but if you put a 4,000 amp inside a meter coil, you burn that baby. So what do you need to do? You need basically to take the coils, here's the coils, the wire coming out of these coils, and bring these coils, um, you bring, think I one end of the coil and you bring the rest, you bring them into a meter. This is the meter. So these guys, they are 4,000 amps now, they can be seen as 5 amps. Now, but you, Dan, my friend, 5 amps, if, if I put a 5 amps in a meter, I'm not going to burn that meter. But if, don't, if I put 4,000 amps in the meter, I guarantee it's burning that baby. Okay, so what they're saying, guys, if they are, if these CTs are not used, meaning they are not tied to a load like a meter, you have to short them. And the reason for that is because if you don't short them, guys, they create a very high 
voltage um, and be dangerous. So you factors do um, during this uh, design them as you unplug the equipment from them short, short uh, completely short. Any was there any questions? Any my friends? Would have chat? Okay. Before we to the option which is working space, guys, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna share my desktop and monitor two and just make sure I walk you through that table. It's very interesting. Um this article expanded in twenty eleven too. Uh, enclosure. All enclosures that you use with almost all mechanical equipment right now, guys, all the enclosures have to be listed in this enclosure table. And I want you guys through a few of these ones real quick. Let's say if I have um I want to mention that this is for outdoor, this is for indoor use. So this, these are the NEMAs. So uh, NEMA, remember how you can see enclosure NEMA one? This is the one the most common one that I use inside, guys. Incidental contact with enclosed equipment, it protects you. And also falling dirt, it protects you. That's the most common enclosure that we use indoor. The enclosure that I use outdoor, 3R, NEMA 3R. Here's my NEMA 3R. It protects you with the same thing from any accidental contact with the equipment, like that one. And also protects you from you from rain, snow, and sleet. Rain, snow, and sleet. That's the most common thing. So 3R and NEMA 1 are the most common ones you're going to, you're going to encounter. Let's go to 6B, guys. If you look at 6B, that's a very expensive piece of equipment. It protects you from our stuff. Can you guys see all this stuff? Um, uh, uh, wind blown dust, down, corrosive agents, timber submersion. Submersion. You can search that panel. So if you need a place where you submerge the panel, that will be your six feet. So, so short, my friend Dan. If you need to, to these guys, the NEMA enclosure, NEMA one, NEMA two, NEMA three B. Uh, if you need an enclosure for certain application, make sure you know how to use this table. And the most common ones you're going to see is R and one outdoor. Indoor or location by location. Any questions about the enclosure? So I just make sure that we we run where the enclosure so we can be all how to get an enclosure. Okay. Now moving from the enclosure into the working space. Now, Joe, my friend, there are two types of spaces around electrical equipment. One of the working space and the other one is the dedicated space. The dedicated space or the equipment space. So these are very interesting two spaces, the working space and the equipment space. Working space and equipment space. The equipment space. So uh, they, my friend, and Matthew and Ross, the equipment space is to bring you conduit. The working space is for you and I to work around the electrical equipment safely. So if I look around a switch gear, I don't want to, um, to be, uh, you know, to, if there's a latch, I want to make sure and get the heck out of it. So working space required to maintain. If you in the electrical equipment, you have to have working space. It's important that you do install equipment in existing workspace. Guys, to pay a lot of attention to the nuances in the working space. Okay. The working space. Wait, guys, I'm going to put the easy, probably share my desktop quick here with you, monitor two, one more time. Uh, um, and go working space table. I just want to make sure and grab you guys so I can see you. Click here and move you so I can see your feedback. Perfect. Okay, next to the working space. I want to highlight this table, guys, because you can you cannot move with the table. Uh, very interesting. And you probably guys will use this for the rest of your life. Working working space. This is for electricians to work around electrical equipment. I'm going to do this scenario, you guys. Here's my electrical equipment here, and here's the wall right in front of the electrical equipment. The electrical 
exactly what um, what and this is the back of the electrical equipment. So that's what we're talking about here. If that makes sense. Um, and basically, I'm talking about number one. This red, the the red, red, red. The base I'm talking about is right here between the wall, which is in here, and the electrical equipment, which is my equipment right here. Okay. Condition one. Condition one. If this wall was ungrounded, an ungrounded wall, which is condition one here, is basically um. Uh, um, rock wall that's called ungrounded wall. The number two, if it's grounded, this is like metal, steel wall, brick wall, concrete, brick, metal, uh, metal anything metallic. Um, and could be number three, guys, if you have two panels facing each other, here's panel number one, here's panel number two, and the in between them. Any questions about the three conditions? Very important to understand the three conditions. How about chat, guys? Make sure they stay with me. Very important to understand the three conditions. If you don't, you Okay, the condition number one, you have a panel, and right in the front of the panel is a wood wall or a sheetrock wall. Condition number two, you have a panel, right in the front of the panel, is a concrete wall, tile wall, brick wall, they call them grounded. And condition number three, guys, you have a panel, and right in the front of the panel is another panel, two panels facing each other. Okay, so look at the voltage to ground. I can't emphasize the word to ground. So uh, the first line, guys, will basically get you the two weights. This is my weight system and, and my 240 system, right? The first one, two weight, 240 system, right in here. So panel is two weight, 120, then condition 1, 3, condition 2, 3, condition 3, 3. So if your system is up to 2 guys, 240, 120, 280, 120, all you need is just three feet here. This just three feet regardless of the of the condition. If your system is 480, this is for 480 system. Look at this, this is 480 system. The 150 to ground is give you 480 Condition three, condition two, three and a half, condition four, four. Have a switch gear. If I switch gear, guys, is a 4,000 amp switch gear for me, and in front of me is, um, is uh, well, let's not just say 4,000 for a second. Let's say a 1,000 amp switch gear for me, uh, a chiller right in front of it, uh, the metallic part of the chiller is it, not energized. That would be condition four, and I need four feet in the front of working space in the front of my equipment. And guys, how about the next four chairs? Make sure you're with me. Or comments or anything to this table. So my working space, very interesting to use it. Uh, width of the working space, guys, is always three feet, or the width of the equipment, whichever is greater. The width of the equipment or three feet. Height of the working space is always um, six inches. We here. Um, Permit to be the working, uh, and the height of the working space shall be clear and blah blah, blah and, and shall be required to be 110 and 10, which is if you guys go to 110.26e, it will, it will tell you 6 and a half. It's actually 0.5. Most of the working space 6 and a half. So that space, 6 and a half feet high, or the height of the equipment, um, is wide or the width of the equipment, and depending on the condition, this is a circuit cow. Nobody can touch these equipment. No one can touch these, these equipment. Picture, my friends. And the next for chairs, make sure everybody knows how to use this table, guys. Everybody knows how to use this table. How about in a graph? Make sure that everybody knows how to use this table. Before I run, we thank you. So that's basically what, what this, um, um, okay. Is the second thing that we, okay, so we talked about the clearances, minimum requirements, um, for the egress. Another that you need to understand, guys, uh, these equipments also, we talked about the height, 
entrance and exit from these spaces, you need at least minimum required is one, at least one entrance. Very interesting, this one, large equipment. If your equipment is 1200 amp and more, I can't emphasize the word, more than six feet, you have to have, you have two entrances, really thing. You have to have two entrances. Shall have one entrance and egg by work with and the 24 by 6 and a half at each end. Uh, and I want to show you guys a couple of pictures here. Here's my equipment, big equipment here. Then they want you to have a door right here and a door right here. There's functions. There are unobstructed egress. So the right in the front of you here. So there's only one door here. Uh, extra working space. If you double docking space. That's also not, not a big deal. Uh, large equipment. I can't emphasize for large equipment, guys. Um, this is a special rule only for large equipment, with exceptions with these two. So, always six feet, 24 inches. You need two of them. You need one at one at each end, two of them, one at each end. And you only need one if, if none. Here's my switch gear. And which gear is located here, and the door is right in front of it. That's called unobstructed. That's addition one. You don't need a switch gear here if the distance. Here's guys the switch gear, and and it used to be four, say four feet, and I make this eight feet. I hold the clearance. the the room bed. Okay, big deal. Uh, personal doors. We talk about the personal doors for twelve. Uh, uh, for the uh, large equipment. Illumination, you have an illumination guys light right adjacent to the equipment. Uh, rooms, we talked about the headrooms for the working space is two and a half. So the working space for the electrical equipment. The work space for the electrical equipment. Uh, the second space guys is called dedicated work. Dedicated equipment. This is for the panel in my panel, and the space right above the panel, um, run the panel up to six feet, run the panel up to six feet, orchard, and right below the panel to the floor, right below the panel to the floor, this is called dedicated space for your conduits. This is dedicated space for your conduits. The webs of the equipment. So that will give uh, dedicated space for the equipment. So you can bring your, your equipment. Uh, you can't put anything foreign in this area. Nothing foreign can enter this area. So you can't put a, a big box right in this area or the big box right, of course, in this area here, especially the top. You need dedicated space. Uh, a suspended ceiling, guys. You can put a suspended ceiling, no problem. Uh, foreign. Uh, sprinkler system coming to sprinkle the switch, believe it or not, that's okay. That's not a big deal, sprinkler system. So basically, what the, what the, and I'm going to go back to the depth, the depth equipment, the width of the equipment, and the height of the working space. This that one. Here's the width, width of the equipment, guys. We say in six feet, uh, I mean 30 inches of the equipment space. Um, so the equipment clears, entrances, we talked about the entrances guys, large equipment, SNL doors, here's large equipment that we were talking about guys, here's 6, 12 feet or over 6, then you have to have two entrances, one door here and door here, there's some exception if I have my pictures here, um, so make sure you guys, if you have the door, if you do right in front of it, right in here, Problem. So we can, if Chad here is working right in the front of the equipment and there's arc and spark here, guess what? It's only one way out. Okay? So that was unobstructed. The second thing is unobstructed here. The second thing, if you double this space, if you multiply this space by two, two so all of a sudden they have six, seven, seven um, what is, uh, six, uh, yeah, three, two, yeah, seven feet. It makes that space seven feet by doubling it. You don't have to have a door here or here. You can only you can only have one, one door if you double the space, and you can put your door anywhere you want. So that 
one more time. If I double this base, make this multiply this by two. The base in the front of the equipment right now here it becomes seven feet. Then I don't need this door. I only need one door. One door is enough. Okay, that's condition one. Condition two. If I make my door right in front of the equipment, as you can see, um, I need the space the same. And on obstructed, so there's a wire. Then I don't need this door, and I don't need this door. Then on obstructed egress path, um, you don't need uh, need two doors. Any question? Yes. Any question? I want to make sure that you know what we're talking about here. I know you guys probably the apprentices you don't appreciate this, but let me you being an engineer guys, having two doors for electrical we install four thousand amp switch gear all the time in big buildings, all the time. So you this say this is a four thousand amp switch gear. And an amp switch gear, six feet is is, is nothing. You're gonna find the twelve foot switch gear. So that's a big piece of equipment, guys. And if I wanna put two doors for it, guess what? This door here is that will take me downtown. Uh, if you're downtown, that will take me right out into Hennepin. You know, and well, so what? What am I? How am I going to make a door right out into Hennepin Street? Because that's where the the switch gear. That's where this side of the building is. And not, the architects are not going to allow you to go put a sewer all the way in Hennepin. It looks like crap. Uh, that's a big deal. A deal that you can't have two doors. So what am I going to do? I'm going to have only one door, one door right in here. So how can I wait with one door? No problem. Double the distance. The distance two. That distance in the front is becomes feet. So uh, when I talk to the architect, as engineer and you guys, when you're involved, when you talk to the architect or somebody, you're going to tell them that you need a room with at least seven feet in the front of the equipment, and my equipment is six feet wide. So 13 feet at least wide room. So you get involved in using the equipment that you need to install in this in this room, that the um, the section of the room. Okay. Any question, guys? I can't emphasize then the electric equipment and how to find the space around the electric equipment is going to be in your journeyman exam. No question asked. To the large equipment with two entrances and the exception unobstructed way one entrance and if you double the clearances or the working space in the front of the equipment that will make you only one entrance. Any question my friends? So make sure that we, we cover that boy. One that the working, the wing room, um, head room, indoors, project, um, guard equipment. The thing is, you have to guard live parts guarded against accidental, guard live equipment. Everything in electrical has to be guarded with a box or something. Then you have to prevent physical damage and you have to put a sign to warn people from using them. So if you look at guard with life parts, life parts guarded against accidental contact, um, life parts of electrical equipment operating at 50 volts or more shall be guarded against accidental contact. You can't put a hot object 50 volts or more sticking on the air where anybody can touch it. You have to guard it with an enclosure or whatever. Uh, these are guarding it by room, located in a room, by suitable permanent substantial partition or screen. Uh, location on a suitable balcony, like elevation eight foot above the floor. These are all ways of guarding equipment, guys. Suitable permanent substantial partition or screen, blah blah blah. Uh, the most common one, guys, is by location in a room, vault, or similar enclosure that's accessible only to personnel. To um, to uh, to quarters. Uh, now, uh, entrances to rooms, other garden location that contain exposed light parts shall be marked with uh, with conceptual signs, uh, permitting unqualified people to enter. 
So what does that mean? If I have to have an open, I don't know if you guys have seen an open, well, an open box. So these are hot conductors sitting in there. I have to guard them. I have to put them in a room locked by uh, with a sign that says, "Hey, if you enter this room, are um, exposed hot conductors and bars." Um, so for people or anybody locked, enclosed in door with a sign that says, "Be aware if you enter this room, there are energized equipment that are hot, exposed, and could you know." In danger, you. That basically my uh, guarding of life parts, life parts guarded against accidental contact. You guard with an enclosure, you can guard them with a room, you can guard them with whatever. You can see the utilities, how they do them. The utilities, they have these open stock stations along highways and enclose them in a big high fence. But inside the enclosure, sometimes if you stand, um, you know, and it's, so you can, everything is exposed, right? On top of you is a cover or one of those bus bars that's carrying medium voltage, very, or high voltage system. But it's considered enclosed and guarded. Enclosed and guarded. Any question, guys? Any question, my friends? Did I shoot to sleep? I hope I did not put you to sleep, guys. You're to the over 600 volts. Oh, I can't emphasize the dedicated space. Maybe I don't know if I touched the dedicated space enough. Just one time, if you guys not the working space, the dedicated space. I'm going to draw a dedicated space right in here. That's the space right above and right below the electrical equipment. That's for electrical equipment. This space here, you can't put anything else other than uh, electrical equipment. It goes all the way, guys, up to six feet above and the floor at the bottom. The reason for this, my friend Dan, is for you and I to bring our conduits. So I bring my conduits. My conduits are coming from the top, and my conduits are coming from the bottom into my bridge gear, or it's for the panel. Okay, so nothing should enter six feet above the switch or the structural ceiling. If there is a structural ceiling here, you're not going to go past through the structural ceiling. That is called dedicated equipment space, so I can bring my electrical equipment. So, my friend, if you have a if you have a mechanical contractor and wants to bring a, a duct, his duct, a big duct that he wants to bring right into this space, um, the violation of the code, and you have to go pick a fight with that young fella. Or you have a sink. How about if I put a sink right underneath here? You can't put a sink. This is big space for electrical equipment. Very thing. Foreign systems very above the naked space shall be permitted. To contain foreign system provided protection is installed, and the void leakage above, okay, sir, shall be permitted for dedicated space, um, for the dedicated space where privately contained, uh, um, combined with inspection and suspended ceiling. Can I put a suspended ceiling in the dedicated space? No problem. So, for the area above the dedicated space required, should be permitted to contain foreign system provided protection is installed. Avoid damage to the electrical equipment from condensation, leakage, or brick in such foreign system. So, my mechanical contractor wants to bring their duct right above the space, guys, no problem, as long as they contain it so it doesn't leak water right above my switch here. Protection. Spring floor protection shall be permitted for the dedicated space where I bring a comply with this section. So, if I have a sprinkler head coming in here, guys, just for no problem, just the sprinkler head. And when this here. Okay, one more time. Any question guys about dedicated space? Dedicated space, JC, my friend, trust. Any question? Equipment space is for equipment. Working space, obviously, for, for working adults like you and I. Okay, basically, uh, the working space. The second thing is over 600 volts. How the work working on over 600 volts? Let me see. Man, over 600 volts. Now we're moving into high voltage. 600 volts, my friend. The requirement for the over over 600 volts. Very interesting. 
over 600 volts. After I put the child complied with part one, in labeling and, and all this stuff, in no shall the this part apply. Look, this is which is supply side of the service. Well, they don't want you, they want it very clear. Now about high voltage here, more than 600 volts. They would make it very clear that does not apply to the utility side of the trans uh, third point. So what are you talking about, Ted? Here, I have my power lines coming from here, guys, and all my power on medium voltage, and and I break 115 kV K transport kVA. This is 115 kV line, and I bring it to my transformer here. Out of my transformer, I took 13.8. Yeah, 13.8. Now, we're talking about big, big voltage here. And it into my switch gear. So, that, what they're saying is it does not apply to the service point. If my service point, uh, in this say the service point at 13.8, here's where my service point is right in here. So, from here on, that utility, from here on, that, that's me. So it doesn't apply to the supply side of the service point. Supply side of the service point. So transformer and the 13S and the power line here, that doesn't apply to it. Um, because it's ahead of the service point. So the section here is utility part. And the section is the part, if that makes sense. Enclosure for electrical installation. Installation in vaults, rooms, or areas surrounded by walls. Access to which is controlled. Lock is considered accessible only for copies. So we're in medium voltage, guys. So medium voltage equipment have to be enclosed and locked. Um, in vault, room, area, and the lock and the lock is only with qualified people like yourself. It can't go to anybody else. So these are considered, um, you know, enclosed for electrical installation have to be locked and so forth. What is about the equipment? We're talking voltage guys. Sufficient space shall be left around the equipment to permit and maintenance. Where is drive park in the same like low voltage? If you are going to work on things hot, testing them, take data from them, maintain them, then you have to leave. Does that make sense, you guys? Six and a half, one or four, the is three feet, the height is six and a half, and the door, like look, I didn't mention that, and the door guys have to open 90 degrees. So the door has to open 90 degrees. So if I have a switch gear right in the front of the switch gear, the, the switch gear or three feet, uh, six and a half feet high, and the door of the switch has to open at least 90 degrees. The depth, we're going to talk about the depth. This space is called working, uh, working space. This space is called working. Space. For these guys, working space, the bridge of low voltage, long elimination. Of, okay, for these guys, I'm going to go quick and share my desktop very quick with you and, and just run through the high voltage um, requirements. I don't know how many of you guys have been in the high voltage section. Let me see that one uh, just to get you a few. It's really interesting how they look at the high voltage. Okay, let's go all the way to my high voltage. High voltage. Here's your table of choice. The interesting table, exactly like the low voltage guys. It's voltage. I'm going to bring to your attention, my friends, a couple things. Uh, the voltage, nominal voltage, nominal voltage, not voltage to ground. This is nominal voltage. Uh, one and uh, distance to light part. Uh, Closure source. Okay. Uh, no, we don't want distance to light part. No, not this one. Light view. And this one. This is just the clearances, the distance part. Let's go to the working. Um, here is my my favorite. Um, okay. Here is the depth of the working space, guys. Uh, the working space. Let's look at nominal voltage to ground. Me, I'm looking at 13.8. System. 38 is system. That's the line to line. 13 8 will get me and divide this by 1.73. I believe you will end up with right in here. Line to neutral. And one, condition two, condition three. Exactly like the low voltage. 
So in the condition C, six feet in the front of me, six feet in the front because they have to, they have to be a thicker cow. So here I switch gear right in here, and cow right in the front of me, and six feet, if I'm in the condition right this, right here in this equipment, uh, up to six feet, there's option three. Say I was in condition three. That's a circus bit I cannot install or do anything. In it. This is just for working in the front of the club. Yes, if it's above 75 k, guys, all the way it goes all the way to 12. The conditions like in the low voltage, stations like in the low voltage. Um, for the high voltage section, guys, you have to separate the low voltage section from the high voltage section. This is low voltage section. This is high voltage section. Uh, voltage section. So you have to separate them. Very interesting separation. You have to lock them and you have to warn the people to keep on. This is high voltage, don't mess around. You have to have some type of illumination in the room so people can know that we're not energized. I want to ask you guys any question about using this table. Any question about using this table? So, if you're wondering why did I come up with like 13.8, I went to 900. If you guys take 13.8, um, 13.8 and divided by 1.73 uh, and times this by 1, 2, 3 because it's 1,000 you end up with 7, almost uh, 800 um, 8, you end up with 8,000 and 8,000 is actually between 500 and 9,000 that's why I came up with with scenario and here's the scenario with my voltage the question is how to use that one in a medium voltage Okay. Um, then, so that's how this table is. The same rule, guys. Illumination. This is the elevation of unguarded light. How high you can put them in. Um, where is that large equipment? Illumination, separation from low voltage, uh, working space. Here's equipment. Equipment, guys, exactly like in the low voltage. This is interesting. Equipment. If your equipment uh, to consider to be large, all that you have to be is uh, exceeding six feet. It have the amps. If I have a switch gear, guys, that um, seven feet, it does have no amp requirement. This would be um, a switch that requires two entrances. Here's my switch here, here. I need an entrance here, and I need an entrance here. The thing is, if I put it unobstructed, if I put my switch gear right in here, and my door right in front of it, no problem, one door. Or I double the distance, if it's supposed to be in the front of it right here, it's supposed to be four, and I need eight. I double the distance, make it eight, which is these two requirements. They don't need two entrances. I have the equipment, the hot part size, personnel doors have to be guarded and have a panic or break. And access permanent stairway has to have access to being in and out of the equipment. Any question, my friends, of a high voltage? Any voltage? How about next for chat? Make sure you go with me. So basically the high voltage is identical to the low voltage in terms of condition, guys. Have different tables. The the logic equipment needs two entrances. But two entrances. Logic need two entrances if it's more than six feet. No requirement for amps. In the voltage they drop that twelve hundred amps because I don't know if anybody wonder why did they drop the 1200 amps in medium voltage because 100 amps guys is a lot of amps at medium voltage so this, a lot of switch gears are carrying 100, 200, 300, 400 if you have a switch gear that's carrying 200 amps at 13.8 that's a lot of power that's a lot of power 13.8 times the 1.2 right times 1.73 equals and it's, you're almost looking at 20 if I did my math right 29 mega amp 20 volt 
them. A huge transformer. So that's the big, big piece of equipment. So that's in terms of, of the medium voltage uh, elevation and so forth. Um, here's my lights, guys, here. Um, interesting. This part of the one. In the voltage there, it's the place where you can use the 90 degree column. Conduction will be permitted to be terminated based on 90 degree temperature rating and intensity as given in these two tables unless otherwise uh, specified. So, if you have a switchgear burner, you can terminate your medium voltage cable based on 90 degree temperature. No problem. And uh, if you don't know anything, it's 90 degree. You have uh, a switch for 150 degrees, then you use 150 degrees. So they go higher, high temperature rating, guys. High temperature rating. Okay. So this, my friends, uh, that's basically the working space, the elevation, locking the equipment, elevation and guarding. There's a tool that tells you how far high you elevate it, uh, protecting the switch gear. And so forth. Circuit conductors. Circuit conductors, guys, you can put them, shall be permitted to be in uh, cable raceways, cable trays, uh, um, metal glass, bare conductor, cable, MB cable. These are wire methods that you can use with medium voltage. So, when I wire with medium voltage, I can use an MB cable. If you like MB cable, how about a metal clad MC cable? Voltage MC cable, they make them. How other cables, I mean, it's a lot of other cables, guys, and button and, and bare conductors that you can use. And install your um, medium voltage in a conduit, no problem, rigid, EMT, um, EM rigid, um, and so a cable tray, or a cable tray, if that's not good enough for you. I can't emphasize the termination of 90 degree. Uh, um, this is the only place in the NEC code book where you can terminate things based on the 90 degree column. Based on the 90 degree column. Every size is, is terminated based on 60 degree column, low voltage, or 75 degree, degree column. 90 degree column in the low voltage is only used for duration. Only for duration. And here's where you can find the answers for these papers. Friend, it's 8.03. Let me give you a quick, any question is before I give you a quick here and move into the tunnel. We'll go back. I'm going to get you your, uh, what time is it here? Um, for let's say 8, 8, uh, 8 or 9. Let's go 8 or 9. Let's get back at 8 or 9. You guys go do something. And we will go into the tunnel installation over 600 volts. Tunnel installation.
Okay, check end, please. And we did not go through this line. Okay, let's move on, guys, <clears throat> and just drop the. So, just to summarize what we did, guys, we went and we looked at the working space around electrical equipment like switch gear, switchboard panels, um, and feature centers, MCCs, at the low voltage level. With 600 volts or less, it's at the working space around the equipment, the dedicated space for the equipment, and we moved into the medium voltage and we looked at the working space around the equipment um, at a medium voltage level. Working space around the, the electrical equipment is a big deal, guys, in the medium voltage level. And um, moving on, we found large, large uh, equipment and so forth. Uh, so the equipment. And then the second thing was okay, so the second thing we're gonna do is something called tunnel installation over six hundred. And I want you guys when I, every time I, I think about tunnel, I want you to to take a look what what do they mean by this little article? What do they apply to? So this is the thing. We're in a tunnel and we are dealing with high voltage equipment. Okay, high voltage equipment, not low voltage. This part applies to the utilization equipment, so machines and so forth, that is portable, mobile, or both. So interesting. So they are stationary, they are portable, mobile, or both in a tunnel, um, or both such as substation, trailers, cars, mobile shovels, like mining and so on, all the stuff. Lines, hoist, drills, uh, ridges, and compressors, uh, pumps, conveyors, underground excavators. So we're talking about portable uh, mobile equipment in a tunnel, high voltage. Very interesting. Uh, other articles apply, guys, to these equipment as reference. They always tell you in this the requirements of this shall so shall be addition to a mandatory of these per. Uh, prescribed in Article 100 through 490. So I'm telling you that Article 100 through 490, the mandatory part is also outlined. Uh, protection from physical damage, almost every system has, has to be protected from physical damage. Um, they're telling you that uh, special guarded law conductors and cables and tunnels shall be located above the tunnel floor and so placed or guarded to protect from physical damage. So very to protect them from physical damage. The overcurrent protection device, motor operated equipment shall be protected from overcurrent device based on the 430. Um, if you guys go to article 430, it will tell you how to size the overcurrent device for um, well, the whole lot, really. But, but uh, size the overcurrent protection device for equipment uh, in a tunnel, medium voltage. Um, our table 3, uh, 450.3, guys. Is a, if I remember right, A, tell you how to size the overcome condition device for a transformer. So if I have a transformer here and here, what you um, size area and what is my um, my fuse, uh, what's my fuse and disconnect size on the second generator. So bring you to the articles that talks about the equipment. Conductor. Conductor used in the tunnel shall be be in, is installed in a metal conduit or other metal raceways, tie MC cable, bring it on, or other approved multi-conductor cable. So you are them in a metallic conduit, EA rigid, PVs, uh, EMT rigid, intermediate, um, or other metallic raceway, or type MC cable, or approved multi-conductor cable. Multi-conductor for multi-conductor, portable cable shall be permitted to supply by the equipment. The equipment, since it's more affordable cable, no problem. In the equipment. Grounded and bonded, uh, these equipment guys have to be grounded and bonded, believe it or not, in the tunnel. All nine tunnels shall be grounded, she shall be grounded, and they want you to bond the high voltage side, guys, uh, to ground at intervals. Look at that, we're bonding them yeah, every 1,000 feet. So about they want you to grab the shield of the cable. 
Grounded only to all metal pipes and rails at the portal and in servos not exceeding every 1,000 feet to another. So, carrying, carrying metal parts and electric equipment and all metal weight and cage sheets shall be solidly grounded and bonded to all metal pipes and rails at the portal and at the servos. So, they want to bond it at, um, to the ground right where the equipment is located. And right where the equipment is located here, you go to the ground and every 100 feet, 1,000 feet, 1,000 feet, every 1,000 feet. Very clear, bonding, transport switches, um, and electrical equipment installed below grade shall be protected from physical damage. Very clear, that, that equipment from physical damage, and um, any other part. Bales of transformers, now bare, bare conductors or terminal, uh, and other electric equipment shall be enclosed to prevent accidental contact with energy as part. You would hope so, in a, in a, in a, especially in a medium voltage. Basically, the um, uh, Any question yet? Any question? Let me get your feedback. Dan, my friend, G Jesse, uh, Ross. Medium voltage put you to sleep all the time. Part protection, ventilation system, electrical control ventilation system shall be arranged so that the airflow can be reversed. Um, so you have a, a, a room where the airflow going this way. Um, you, they, sh they want you to design it in a way where you will exhaust in air in or exhaust air out based on the application. If there's a fire or something, so that's an interesting electrical control or ventilation system shall be arranged so that the airflow can be reversed. Very clear. In the case of fire, this correct means switches, circuit breakers that simultaneously open all underground conductors of the circuit shall be inside installed within sight of the transformers and the motor. To disconnect means either a switch or a circuit breaker that simultaneously disconnect all the ground underground conductor and it has to be within sight of the transformer. Uh, shall have an amp rating not less than shall have an amp rating not less than the amp rating um, than the amplicity of the transformer supplying the conductor. So transformer over my friend is a, a say a thousand amp transformer might connect right ahead of the transformer is going to be one thousand amp uh, disconnect. Just going that one. So the circuit breaker for the motor shall comply with motors. Uh, we talked about one all and breaking not less than the basis of the transformer supplying the conductors. Okay. So anything related to motor, we have to refer you to the motor enclosures. Enclosure for use in touch shall be drip proof. Now remember it's a tunnel. Proof submersible as required by the environment. Switch contact enclosed shall not be used as a junction boxes. Raised ways for conductors feeding through tapping up to the other switches. So enclosure containing a switch or a contactor, they don't want you to use it as a raised way to grab feeder from it into other equipment. Very good. And again, we we are in the tunnel. We are in the tunnel. A oh, question is about tunnels for medium voltage. Question for tunnels for medium voltage. Let me ask how many of you have medium voltage in tunnels? And medium voltage in tunnels? Tunnels? Okay, one of you, great. Two, medium tunnels that deals with portable and um, wild equipment. As you can see. I hold on, guys, to the next part. And it's really a very interesting article, guys. You cannot live without it. I can't believe Article 10 is very important. The last part of Article 110, guys, is manhole and arc enclosures intended for canal entry. All voltages, high voltage, low voltage, this applies to manholes and ha manholes mainly, where people can walk personal entry, walk into this manhole, walk into this manhole. Oh, look at that. 
Ethical enclosure is visited for personnel. Entry must have sufficient size to allow safe enter and exit of the place. The thing. Enclosure or or hall or hidden hall that you have to enter, it has to have enough room for you to get in, get out, and safe. Get in, get out, get safe. String. The metal, the vault, and their means of access shall be designed under look at that, a qualified engineering supervision and shall withstand all those likely to be exposed on them. The medical, physical um, loads. So you don't put somebody in manholes and, and, and vaults and so forth, and uh, that, that vault is going to fall right on the top of the, of the people. So a lot of engineering involved in doing manholes and we're seeing a water into them. So, and any question is, any questions? So, wide engineering supervision and all the the loads imposed on them, the mechanical, physical loads. So, we are in the manhole, as I said, cabling, cable space, clear working space, at least three feet. Shall be divided where cables are located on both sides. You have your manhole here, and your equipment are racked in both sides. Right here, your equipment are racked. You have to have a clearance at least of three feet in between them. Three feet in between them, so people can work. For cable. Now remember, these are just cables. Distance uh, of two and a half feet where the cables are on one side. So if your cables are on one side. Is my manhole? I'm bracking my cables right in here. One side, two and a half. If you put them in both sides, as we said, my cables are racked in here. Uh, you have to have three, three feet. Equipment, just cable. Bird rooms is six feet. You need to be able, as a man or a woman, to be able to stand in that manhole. In that manhole. That's interesting. Um, so we came in six feet on the opening is within one foot measured horizontal of the adjustment. So that's we would have the vertical headroom shall be shall be not less than six feet as the opening is within one foot measured horizontal of the adjacent interior side wall enclosure. So you can you can basically stick out of the manhole. Uh, man manholes containing only one more of the following shall be permitted to have one of the horizontal works based to where so there's some exceptions there where uh, other horizontal plane works space is increased so the sum of two dimensions is not necessarily ancient for fire optics, power fire alarm, level surface. So there's, there's a except for low voltage. The uh, following should be permitted to have one of the horizontal work space dimension reduced to two feet. So to all the way to two feet. And if you guys look what they are carrying, these equipment carrying cable five, gas five, power limited fire alarm system class two. So it's really carrying power. Um anything else, any questions about cabling them from both sides? If you are to install equipment in this manhole where electrical equipment life part, not just equipment, wood life part is like no cables or cables. Cables no problem. Electrical equipment, switch gears, switch boards, and so forth, likely to require maintenance uh, installed in a manhole uh, or or similar. Now now you basically elevate to the situation. You have a manhole or a bolt, you my manhole or a bolt, and then I put my switch gear right in here. That's my switch gear. Now getting into a whole different animal. The works base, then what? You have to apply the same working space rules, guys. So working space between the, in the manhole, the working space, let's say that was a 480 switch gear. 480 uh, switch gear. And let's say for the, for the of argument, let's say for the of argument, it was a low voltage uh, low voltage switch here and concrete on the other side, so that will be a three and a half feet. So I need a three and a half feet. Okay, now, ha so 
suppose that we that switch gear, we switch gear, and I, I have um, change it into a new voltage switch gear. So this is 30, 38, 13,800 kVA. Now I need a clearances. Now I'm in the medium voltage switch gear. You have to go to the medium voltage side, and if it's 13,800, the new voltage clearances, it will tell you clearly that you have, if you're in condition 3, you need 5 feet. You need 5 feet. Long story, my friend Joe, if you install electrical equipment that needs maintenance while energized or testing, as in switch gears, switch boards, meter centers, motor control system, um, uh, open picture device enclosures, uh, all these, if you install them in a vault, you have to apply the rules of the working space for high voltage or and the low voltage. Depend on, depending upon the equipment that you're installing in this vault. The same rule, working space rule. And wait, if you are, if you decided um, <laughs> if you decided to put the rules of 26, what if you decided to put equipment face to face? There will be if you decide to put equipment face to face. So if I hand hold, manhole up here, and I decided to put my voltage switch gear on one side here and my low voltage switch on the other side. So this is 13 um, it here and this is 80 or 80 here. So this switch gear now you have to double the clearances between them. You have clearances between them, you go to the medium voltage, my medium voltage clearance is hot to hot is six. It multiplies now I got myself at twelve for man. You're in a, that now you're now you're getting into a big equipment. Well put manhole. If you equipment is like the, 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 the tunnel or inside the um, manhole. Any question you about clearances in the manhole? Any questions in 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 the manhole? Okay, moving on into bending space for conductors. Bending space for conductors operating at low voltage. But I want to remind you guys now, you start bringing cables to the manhole, and the cables are more than number. Um, if the conductors are more than number four, then you apply the rules of the pull boxes. If it's low voltage, you apply the rules of the pull box for the low voltage. If it's a high voltage, you apply the rules of the clock for high voltage. Example, if we have a conduit coming into this hand, a manhole and going out, so that would be a straight pole, and that conduit was 6 inch rigid, 6 inch rigid, 6 inch rigid, then the distance, if you guys remember from multiplying the um, pole, that will make it 8 times 6, and if I did my math, that would be 48 inches. The minimum distance width is 48 inches. Has been a cable, a medium voltage cable, then you have to go to 314.78, and I can't remember was it 40 um, 30 or 46. Um, Whole watch, I'm not catching you. Can you explain by whole watch? Are you meaning um, in a hand hole, hole enclosure? Just want to explain that one to me a little bit. I'm not familiar with the term. Okay, um, so if you are using, as I said, medium voltage, you have to apply the medium voltage uh, rule for it. It's shielded cable, if I remember right, it was 36, 46. And these guys, you find them in uh, 314.78, very easy, A and B, shield and unshielded cable. Uh, so, you're going to apply the same rule of a pull box to the manual uh, based, on, based, uh, based on the conductors that enter the box. Based on your conductor enter the box. Okay, that's basically, I'm just trying to see what is it, 78, full box 29, 30, 
Let's okay. Marking over 100 volts, 72. The box is used over system. Okay. Uh, one. Yeah. If it's a thread pole and it's a non-shielded cable, the uh, box shall not be 48 times the outside diameter over sheet of the largest shielded or lead covered conductor. So it's 48 for the shield, or if it's not shielded. Um, 32 times the outside diameter of largest non shielded cable. So 48 or two times the diameter of the cable. Times the diameter of the cable. Okay. Um, directly, directly, the term in, ter hand uh, in terms of a manhole if you're in inserting equipment. Also, there should be wrapped up or arranged in a Manner. In a proof. Any question is any comments, any questions, questions, any comments? Then um, manhole. Uh, a couple of things guys about manholes, dimensions. There's um there's a list of dimensions guys in, in one ten dot seventy five that I would like to quick review before what we call it an IT here. These most dimensions, uh, number one is the dimension. If you guys look in the same five, it says um, rectangular. If it's rectangular for the axis of the manhole, it has to be 22 by 22. If it's round, the diameter is 26. So if it's looking at 22 by uh, 22 by um, 26, so 26 by 22. And if it's around, you're looking at the diameter of 24. Why the diameter of 26? Okay, as I mentioned, uh, construction. Construction, my friend, um, um, obst obstruction. Obstruction, the manhole opening shall be free of obstruction that could injure personnel or prevent ready egress. Um, uh, Look, you can't put the uh, manhole right in here if your hole is right here. The manhole, you can put it right at the top of the equipment. And here's my equipment. The manhole, um, in terms of location, the manhole opening for the present shall be located where they are not directly above the next equipment. So you jump into the manhole and right inside that switch gear or top of the transformer. All the next equipment or conductors in the enclosure where there is not either a protective barrier or a fixed ladder shall be provided. Because we don't want you to jump right on the top of a transformer. Cover. Covers, guys, uh, they have to be, uh, what is it? Um, shall be over 100 pounds, or you have to be able to lock it in a closed position. So, covers shall be, shall be over 100 pounds, or otherwise, be going to be locked. You have to mark it with electrical, so people don't think that this main hole is a, uh, is a water. You have to mark it with electrical, um, with term electrical, to indicate that this is a manhole for electrical equipment. Hole for electrical equipment. Any questions? Questions? See my friend Joe. Any questions? So last thing is about this tunnel. So, um, and these are both high voltage or low voltage. <coughs> Access to the vault and the tunnels. Uh, mission access opening must not be directly above the electrical equipment in enclosure lock. You have to lock them. Um, um, access opening must be arranged such that a person on the inside, this is interesting, can exit when the access door is locked from the outside. So like a car trunk, you, they don't want you to be trapped inside this manhole. So if you are supposed to be trapped in the manhole, they should the mechanism of the lock should be able to be opened from the inside of the manual. Very interesting. So if, uh, you can't basically trap people inside that uh, manual. Um, um, where the manual tunnel and vault have communica um, communicating opening into the enclosed area used to the public nation to open it shall be provided where practical. So you have to provide the nation where tunnels and vaults have communicating opening into the enclosed area used by the public and relation to open air 
shall be provided wherever practical. So, uh, yeah. And the last thing is guarding where conductors, equipment, or both could be uh, contacted by objects falling or being pushed through the ventilation uh, uh, grating. Both conductors and light parts shall be protected in according with their the, the voltage. So they don't want you guys all these ventilation holes. They don't want people to be sticking things, tampering, putting all these wires inside the ventilation um, dam. And then being energized, high voltage or low voltage equipment. So you need to design an area where if you stick something in these holes, you're not going to get um, the of energized equipment. The ladder shall be washing resistant. As you put your ladder inside that that big manhole, uh, it has to be corrosion resistant, and you probably guys appreciate that one. You're able to use it for years to come, for a, a year or two, and then just corrode it. Okay, question guys about the manhole. Any question about the manhole? About manholes? Um, okay, so let me see where we are here. All right, so this is uh, fixed learners. Okay, I want to hit guys, that's all what I have for you. So I can't emphasize guys how important this article is. Very small, very short, has a lot of a lot of information to Billy Gerald, my friend, about the clearances around the electrical equipment and um, and uh, of course the the tunnel, the design of a tunnel, uh, the racks, the, the distance between the racks. If you have a tunnel, a tunnel or a, a or um, a manhole, how do you rack the cables on both sides? How do you treat it if you have conductors entering? How do you treat it as a pull box? And so if you put equipment inside it, how you have to maintain the clearance on these electrical equipment if it needs maintenance, energized, and, and switch gear for the panel. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and open up the poll and uh, make sure that, okay, this is poll number one. I do have seven problems for that one. I'll go open it for you. Uh, give you seven uh mix and let you guys go and chew on that one for a while. There you go. Let's start and this is directly from what we have just covered guys. And another poll and then we'll discuss what we need to do here. Start my friend. Let me see. Okay. 
Here guys, give me a second here. Question guys about the poll and question about an expert chair or green check or any question. Is there any question? Make sure that everything is okay. Oh, a really good review guys of the working space, uh, listing and labeling requirements. So, um, the rules of um, identification of disconnect. Part the second poll tonight would be before. Uh, let me see if anybody has a question here. Okay, um, you can check if you have. Okay, let me go open the second one for the night. These are ten questions, guys, and then if we have time, I can go over the definitions and in that ten. So let's go here. Give you a simple amount of time. Seven minutes. Let's give you eight minutes for these. And let's open the second poll site, guys. To go over um, the equipment terms and, and, and work base and so forth. We'll see with the working space. Head and start, my friends. And where we can you know, from there.
Okay.
Alright, uh, so guys. Done. Can you please chat with me? If you look at guys this picture in front of you, I have two switch gears. One is second one he is is four eighty. One of the switch gears is four eighty four thousand seven feet wide. The second is thirteen eight. And eight foot wide, and the ends I don't care. And facing each other, and has two doors. What would the distance x between them must be based on any foot book? You please chat that distance with me. So click on the chat and chat that distance with me. Now remember, there are two doors on both sides. Both they have two doors on both sides. And between a 13-8 switch gear and a 4,000 amp for a switch board or switch gear. Um, so you guys go check that distance with me. Make sure you you get that. Uh, for alright, uh, as um, okay, to give you the correct answers. <coughs> So I hope that guys the the poll was good. I mean it's just few there's a few things about qualified person. One person is a big deal in the NEC code book guys. I really want everybody to know that uh, the qualified person look at the code defining uh, one has the skills, the knowledge related to the construction and operation of the electrical equipment and the others involved and has received training to recognize and avoid the hazards involved. So knowledge, um, the knowledge of how the equipment works and how it operates, and also received safety training how to avoid the equipment. How to avoid the equipment. Okay. Yes, I want you guys um, to go and check the distance x. I have two switch gears, low voltage, one high voltage, facing each other, face to face. What should the distance between them? What should the distance between them be? I think that there is a door, both doors. So there are large equipment. There are doors on both sides. There are both sides. So I, I just I'm interested in the distance between them. How about can you get that distance with chairs, please? Let's go and see. Should be between these two. This year, oh, I see uh, numbers here. I don't know where does that come from. Um, just for you guys, the, the line to ground voltage. Let me just write it here. The ground voltage of this is like eight hundred, eight thousand, eight volt. This is the ground. So it's 13,800 volt line to line, 8,000 volt line to ground, 8,000 volt line to ground. So that will, you, that will help you a little bit. Okay. So 8 by 8, basically. Okay, what's the distance? Okay, the numbers that you're sending me, not, I think one of them is, is, uh, is called logical movement. Okay, I want you to look at the definition of large equipment for medium voltage. Say there are two there 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 either you have two two bars, one on both sides, then you don't have to double the distance. Or double the distance between them, or you on an obstructed piece of exit in, in a case like this, uh, which is hard to do in this one. So if I have two doors, both sides, what should the distance be? I'm not sure your answer is very good. And I don't basically. One more try. One more try. Come on. Oh. No? <laughs> okay. 112 inches. Okay. All right. So let's look at the X. 
So I'm looking at the X here. If you go, so I have two switch gears. Go by the worst scenario. The worst scenario is 38. So that will take you to table 110. 110. Dot 34. 1.34a. 1.34a, guys, from there, I know that this is position number three, position number three, because I have two energized parts on both sides, position number three. And if you look at position number three, first of all, they're large equipment. Yes, they are large equipment, but but they're, they, I, for large equipment, all that they want you to do is just have two doors. No problem. Maintain these two doors. You don't have to do anything else. So I maintain the two doors, on both, one on both each side. Then I can go to the 2500 to 900, that position 3, that will give me 6 feet. So since I have, I don't know how you guys came up with the 12, multiply by 2, is that what you guys came up with the 12? Uh, divide by 2. Uh, you don't have to multiply by two, guys. The only time you multiply by two is if I ask you. There is no door. See, see there is no door here. Uh, this does not exist. So drop one door. If you drop one door, if yours, then the answer should be six. If you drop one door, then you multiply the six by two becomes six by two. If you have only one door. And that will give you 12. And then probably that's why you get that 12 from it. If there is a door, you multiply it by 2, the distance by 2. If there are doors, you put the distance number 6. Two hot facing each other. Any question is? Any question about what we have covered tonight? How about you guys make sure you're not going to sleep? So to summarize, guys, there was a great uh, one thing is a great article to get clearances in the front of electrical equipment, high voltage, low voltage. So they're very important to understand the clearances, working clearances on the equipment, the depth, the width, the height, and also the dedicated equipment space to bring your conduit directly above the equipment to the width and the depth of the equipment, space above it and directly below it to the uh, structural floor. Um, and then we talked about a little bit about tunnels, not too important, but we talked about handholds and manholes, uh, three manholes, and the requirements for manholes, and that was really cool. Okay, next week, my friends, hopefully you guys will do a great job on the test. Next week, we're going to go into our last, last um, that we'll be talking about uh, code, and then we're going to be moving into ADDC uh, base electricity. So next week guys we're going to do electrical installation and plan. How plan your um, your systems, um, your power system in a house or anywhere else. Say you get to a building, how do you design the electrical system for that building? The power, the, uh, lighting, the lighting, the um, you know, the power and, and, and the HVAC equipment based on the code. So there are a few things that we can talk about. All right, one more time. Any questions for chat before I let you guys go? Any questions? If you have any questions, my friends, um, thank you for coming tonight, and we will see you next week. So, and uh, we'll see you next week. I hang around if anybody wants anything, and otherwise, we'll see you next week. <clears throat> Okay.